Hey everyone, Ben Yunsen here. Today we're going to be looking at soloing with triads on guitar. At first, triads seem to be among the most basic materials that you'll use for soloing, but at the same time they can also serve as the most vital core element of a guitarist's soloing language. So today I'm going to show you a practical approach to soloing with triads. Get the full version of today's lesson at bensguitarclub.com where you can pick up how to solo with triads. You'll get tab and notation of everything you'll hear me playing today, as well as detailed written examples and instructional videos. And if you've been enjoying the content on my channel, make sure to hit subscribe down below and click the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos. And if you'd really like to support my channel, make sure to join my channel as a member. Let's get started with section one. We're going to be looking at all of our examples today in the key of C major, and we're going to be utilizing all seven diatonic triads that can be derived from the key of C major, and indeed from the C major scale. To make sure we know what these seven triads sound like, let's begin by playing our seven diatonic triads in root position in C major. Let's play them as chords. Throughout all of our examples today, we're going to be drawing the distinction between playing triads chordally and playing triads in a single note fashion. You just heard me play all of the root position diatonic triads chordally, that is, played as chords. Now let's try playing them in a single note fashion. So far, we've looked at all of our triads in root position. That means that the root note is the lowest note in the chord, for example. Our root note C is the lowest note. Root position is a type of inversion, and we have a total of three inversions to choose from. Root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Let's try an exercise where we solo with the triadic inversions of chords 1 and 5 in the key of C major. Firstly, taking a chordal approach. In section 2, we'll be discussing primary triads. In any major key, chords 1, 4, and 5 are referred to as primary triads. So that means that in the key of C major, C is the 1 chord, F is the 4 chord, and G is the 5 chord. If we took a single note approach, C would be the 1 chord, F would be the 4 chord, and G would be the 5 chord. Soloing, or indeed composing, with just primary triads can be a very powerful sound, but it can also serve as a great exercise in limitation. Here's a question for you. Can you limit yourself to soloing with just these three triads without deviating from any of the notes that constitute the chord tones of these three triads? Good question. Let's see how our primary triads sound when we take a single note soloing approach in the key of C major. Make sure to check out the full version of today's lesson at bensguitarclub.com where you can pick up 
how to solo with triads. You'll get tab and notation of everything you've heard me play today, as well as detailed written explanations and instructional videos. In section three, we're going to move beyond just primary triads. And instead, we're now going to be looking at all seven diatonic triads in C major. In section one, we took an introductory look at playing all seven diatonic triads in C major. But now we're going to expand on this by soloing with all these triads. Once again, let's hear these seven diatonic triads played in an arpeggiated single note fashion. With that alone, you have a perfect example of triadic material that can be used while soloing. So now, let's try an exercise where we take a single note soloing approach to playing all of our diatonic triads. One way that you can make this single note soloing approach a little more interesting is by applying what we call a chromatic approach note to each triad. If we were to play our diatonic triads in a single note fashion, in a descending pattern, they might sound something like this. To make this sound a little more interesting, we can add a chromatic approach note occurring a half step below the fifth degree of each triad. For example, if we have a C major triad with the notes C, E, and G, G is our fifth degree. Now a half step below the fifth degree G is F sharp. That means that F sharp is going to serve as our chromatic approach note for our fifth degree G. In the context of a triad, it's going to sound something like this. If we took the same descending single note triadic pattern that I played for you a moment ago, but this time we apply a chromatic approach note a half step below the fifth degree of each triad, it would sound something like this. Let's hear this concept being utilized within the context of some lines over C major. In section four, we'll be taking a good look at spread triads. Spread triads can be incredibly useful when taking a chordal or a single note approach to triads on the guitar neck. And sometimes you'll also hear spread triads referred to as open triads. To create a spread triad, we can take a basic triad like C major in root position and rearrange the notes to utilize some wider intervals. For example, C will still be our root note. Next up in our spread triad will be our fifth degree G. And then next up, up the octave, will be our third degree E. So we end up with something that sounds a little bit like this. Since that was a spread triad in root position, this means once again, in spite of the fact that these are spread triads, we're still presented with a series of inversions. So let's go down the octave. This is root position. First inversion. And second inversion. Let's try some single note soloing utilizing only spread triads in C major. final section today, we're going to take all of the approaches that we've looked at so far and apply them to five improvised phrases 
that will be entirely based on triads. It's fascinating to me that triads are generally considered to be very basic because you can take all of the approaches that we've looked at so far and utilize them to form the basis of a cohesive solo. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. But first, let's look back on some of the approaches we've taken so far. You can start off with primary triads. You can continue with diatonic triads played in a single note fashion. You can continue with diatonic triads with a chromatic approach note. Then you can look at spread triads played in a single note fashion. And then you can also look at spread triads played quarterly. Let's take a look at our first phrase built entirely from triads. And finally, let's take a look at our second triadic phrase. And once you have a command of these materials alone, you can form the basis of a cohesive solo. As always, make sure to have fun playing through all the materials and exercises that we looked at today. Don't be afraid to experiment with them, and most importantly, try to make them your own. I can't wait to hear what you come up with. I'll see you next time. Thank you.